Welcome. This uh, is an episode of how to become a better fly tire. And today um, we're gonna talk about tie mayfly emergers and what to think about different materials. Uh, yeah, everything from zero to hundred. That's the thing. Uh, mayfly emergers is the state of a mayfly when they emerge from the Nymphopupa larva stadium. And the mayfly emergers uh, is a, um, it's a good fly to have because a lot of fish they prefer to eat the emerger because it's an easy prey uh, if you compare it to um, like the dun stadium of, of the mayfly. And there is so many materials you can use to tie mayfly emergers and we're gonna go over every part of the fly from the tail to the head yeah like from toes to the head <laughs> yeah but in mayfly emerger state um, when you're tying uh, mayfly emerger emergers you can tie them on a different variety of hooks I prefer to have a slightly bend of the hook uh, because when the mayfly emerger is laying in the water they normally lay kind of straight actually but they have a slightly bend to the nymph uh, to the back uh, body the nymph um, the nymph part before they are emerged and that, that is most often a little slightly heavier than the uh, mayfly itself so when it's laying in the water it's not completely straight uh, it has a slightly bend so I prefer to have a hook with a slightly bend not too much not the clean camera style but I will show you what hooks I prefer to, to use in a merger mayfly emergers uh, that has this slightly bend um, but if we start to talk about materials Depending uh, what the size of the mayfly emerger you're about to tie. I mean there's mayfly emergers that are size 20-22 and there's mayfly emergers that are the size, size uh, 8 or maybe even 6. Uh, like the ephemera uh, state, uh, ephemera vulgata, ephemera tonica. They are really really big. And then you got PVOs and or trichos and stuff like that that are really really small. And um, depending what size of mayfly you are uh, imitating, um, that is what uh, will make you choose the right material for the specific uh, mayfly emerger you are tying. But if we will start with the tail. That is the first thing you tie in when uh, you are tying this, this uh, mayfly merger. Or sometimes you don't even have a tail, like the shuttlecock emergers, they don't uh, have a tail. Uh, they have a quill or a biot uh, strip, um, what, what makes uh, the body, so they don't have a tail. But normally nymph, they have a Actually, the nymph stadia of the mayfly has a, a much thicker uh, diameter than the mayfly tail. But sometimes you will want to use like a really thin uh, tail or maybe you want to have a, a little bit thicker one. Um, depending what kind of the uh, mayfly um, sort you are tying. But a lot of people, and also me of course, I use uh, different kind of fibets. Uh, this is a nylon material which is tapered. Um, you can see them there. Here's another one. I will show you, take it out of the package. This is a brown one. Um, which is a slightly tapered uh, nylon material. That is perfect for the really small flies. Uh, when you want like just a, a thin diameter of the tail and um, 
uh, also this is a recommendation for you if you want a lot of tales for uh, the emergers, the done, the stents, you go and buy this one. This, this is a, a painting brush uh, and you want one with this nylon. Uh, I think I have used this specific 11 years now and you see I haven't even, I probably tied around 20,000 flies on this one. I would say and there's like nothing <laughs> it's so much left and um, for also for like the tails and stuff uh, the mayfly tails uh, some of some people they also use uh, you can use a moose mane and or also uh, the fibers from um, from uh, like deer hair or uh, something similar that is what many people can also use as a little tail. But I think that some of the times this material, like uh, mane or, or deer hair, it sometimes break kind of easily. Um, but a lot of people, they use that also. And then of course you can use uh, fibers from feathers. I prefer to use, if I use fibers from feathers, I prefer to use coctelion which is a little barred and a, a, a nice, uh, it looks really nice, like mm, yeah, a little, what are called, yeah, some kind of barred. But sometimes you want to imitate the shock of the fly or have a shock in the emerger, also with maybe fibets or t uh, tailor material like coctelion or uh, fibers and then you want to have a little bit of shock fibers into this and then you can use um, something that's called sparkle emerge yarn this I use very much because it's a thin synthetic fiber and you can use just use a few and it only has a little bit of sparkle into it uh, also like poly yarn it's really nice a lot of people they use this also like a, a tailing material or a shock material for the fly and then also if you have really small flies you can use fluorofiber uh, it's super super thin uh, you can have it on a lot of different colors so this is really nice if you're tying those really really small mayfly mayflies or mayflies emergers um, so these different kind of materials are really good to to use as um, a tailing material um, yeah you can also use a little bit of CDC if you want to imitate the shock or like this a little bit um, yeah maybe damage tail fibers or yeah for the nymph when it's like about to emerge then you can use a little bit of CDC which is really really nice also but it's also like if you have caught a couple of fish, it could uh, fall off. Uh, so you want something that maybe holds up a little better. And that most of the time is actually synthetic material. That uh, works really good for uh, a tailing material. Uh, and then the body. The first, the back body of the fly. You can use so many different materials here. Uh, synthetic, natural. Um, yeah, there's uh, so many materials you can use, depending also what, how you want the mayfly to lay in the surface. Uh, if you want it kind of high up or a little bit down below subsurface, um, that is what the material will do, depending uh, what material you use and how you maybe um, put um, um, yeah if you use like some kind of fat or dry fly um, oh not sure what the name is but if you're gonna put something on the dry fly to make it float some flotation uh, not sure what it's called but yeah you probably understand what I mean uh, because I totally forgot <laughs> what the name is actually sorry for that uh, but I hope you understand but if you are like 
put some kind of impregnation in the fly, uh, that will the material of the body uh, use or maybe not, depending what kind of material you are using. If you want a fly that is a little bit higher up in the surface or just below the surface, it's good to use some kind of um, sort of natural material. You can use like a very thin dubbing, natural dubbing, um, and but it has to be quite fine. Um, that is what I think because you don't want like a too bulky body of this kind of emergers, especially if they are. Uh, slightly smaller. If you are tying bigger mayfly measures then you can use of course more material. Uh, I will talk about that also but I prefer to use either a really thin fiber uh, ma and mat mater material like maybe kapok, kapok that's a really thin fiber works very well for for making bodies. Um, then I also use love to use biot quills, turkey biot quills or goose biots, um, because you have these fibers that works very well for a body, and then you have these on the side that um, makes a really nice structure of the back body of the fly. And the thing is, this mostly works for slightly smaller flies, like up to size. 12, 12, 14, 16, stuff like that. If you're tying bigger flies, then you want some longer uh, material because these are lay top like three centimeters or just just over two, two and a half or uh, one, one and a half inch. Uh, so that is uh, you want. A slightly longer material to use if you're tying bigger flies and if so you can use dubbing of course both uh, natural and synthetic but I also use this dirty bug yarn which is a yarn um, that works well very well for these uh, bigger mayflies um, which is nice um, yeah what else to think about about the body? Yeah, of course, I forgot it. You can also, if you tie uh, really small ones, I prefer to use just a little bit of wire uh, to make it look kind of nice and also have a slightly uh, weight to it so it will just lay perfect in the subsurf subsurface. Uh, I also love to use this one. This is a vinyl rib. This is the size midge. You can also use the new variant if you if you tie slightly bigger flies. But uh, this this one, it's a vinyl material, which is uh, rounded on one side and flat on the other side. And so think about that when you tie this in, depending how you want the fly to look, of course. Um, as a body material, you can also use a CDC feather. Uh, you tie it in. Um, you tie in the feather and pull it back and then you can just uh, rib the body with this CDC material. I prefer to use it actually on caddis mergers, not so much on mayfly mergers. Uh, I prefer to have a slightly more thin body on my mayfly mergers. So I prefer uh, prefer to use like biot quills or just uh, maybe just thread. Uh, or yeah, something a really thin fiber uh, dubbing, because yeah, I don't want to overdo it, so it looks too fat and I'm bulky. I want a thin profile on my emergers. Uh, that is what I prefer, but it depends, of course, what you want to tie. Um, and then for the wing case material, it depends how you're tying it in, of course how you're building up the wing uh, of the emerger. I prefer to use CDC as a bubble wing. Uh, I think it lays perfect, it, get, it uh, has a nice flotation to it, but of course you can use a lot of different materials for the wing. Like we talked about before, this uh, sparkle emerger yarn or poly yarn um, is perfect to, to use as a wing also. 
but also, like I showed you before, uh, deer hair in different varieties that you can use. Uh, you can also use something called snowshoe rabbit feet. This is actually a nice material. It uh, has a really good flotation and some fat to it and it's really nice to, to prepare with some um, um, yeah this um, I have to see what it's called but yeah some to make it float at least and there's a lot of colors to this and you use uh, primarily that little ticker here with some that has some arrow into it also uh, so that one is really good and there's a lot of colors of this uh, but I prefer to use like really natural ones or slightly lighter ones, especially for the Mayfly mergers. And then people also like to use foam. I use it in some of my larger Mayfly mergers because they need some extra flotation. Because yeah, bigger hook, more material, stuff like that. So that's when I think foam is uh, needed actually for for this kind of uh, larger flies but of course you can use it also to, to smaller ones but then I prefer to just use CDC sorry someone was calling and I don't have time because I'm talking with you now yeah that's about it actually that I think is usable for the wing material uh, CDC which is really nice, it dries up really quick. Uh, snowshoe, uh, rabbit feet, uh, some deer hair. Um, and you can also use a mix of this. You can do a bubble wing of CDC and then you can use this actually as legs and it will have some flotation into it as well. Also like the snowshoe. Um, so that is, you can like, depending the size of the merger you're tying and, and how you want it to lay in the, su in the surface. Um, that is what you can, then you will use or take the material will, that will fill this, um, um, yeah, what to call it. It will make the fly act like you want it to act. I took a short break because I was a little bit chilly and uh, wanted some coffee. Coffee is always needed. So yeah, we have talked about the wing material, but I just want to say one thing. The back body is also called the abdomen, of course. Uh, that is what you normally say about uh, like mayflies or caddis flies or yeah, flies in, in general. So abdomen or the back body. And we have talked about, of course, the wing material. And now we're going to talk about the front of the fly, which is normally called thorax. Um, and here you can use a lot of different things. Uh, most normal is to use some kind of uh, uh, dubbing, of course. Um, and um, that is, is uh, in general what what we yeah what we use actually. And here you can also use a fine uh, fiber dubbing or what I think is really nice some kind of natural dubbing or also some synthetic dubbing depending how large the uh, fly the mayfly merger you're tying but um, a natural uh, dubbing with some uh, guard hairs and stuff like that is perfect because you can brush it out and, and have them as legs uh, and about legs if you don't, if you want some extra legs, as we have talked about before, you can use the deer hair as legs. You can also use some soft tackle patches as uh, and feathers as legs. You can use like what many people do, partridge. That is some sexy bird. This is perfect for both the tail material and also the legs, of course. And you can also use CDC as we have talked about. And also the snow, uh, snowshoe rabbit feet. That is perfect to use as legs. But you can also use like synthetic materials like this sparkle emerging yarn we have talked about. Also floral fiber. All, always depending on how big the merger you are tying. Um, that is what makes the 
will make you make a, need to make a choice whatever kind of material you want to use for the different parts. Uh, like we have talked about tails, abdomen, back body, uh, wing material, uh, thorax, legs, stuff like that. And then also for the head maybe, if you're using a, a larger fly uh, or tying a larger fly. Um, that is uh, a lot of things to think about actually. If you want to tie better flies, if you don't care, <laughs> but I guess you'd care because that is why you're watching this, uh, this video, this clip, uh, because you want to tie better flies. And what else to think about? Um, do your research, try to match the hatch. If a blue winged olive is hatching uh, or emerging, you want to have something as similar as possible because you can have really picky fish or finicky fish, uh, shy fish. And um, you will always um, catch more fish if you have an imitation. Uh, of the real bug that are kind of similar or look alike, uh, especially if you have um, slow flowing water, the fish is the rivers are clear, the fish have time to actually look at the fly. We have seen fish uh, that have followed our flies for three, four, five, six, up to eight, nine meters before they make a uh, before they change up, change up their mind if they're gonna take it or not take it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand it looks, um, it's, um, it seems to be crazy, but we actually seen this in Slovenia uh, for really picky fish. So of course you need a good fly, a good presentation, thin leader, stuff like that. But the fly is uh, really important in this case. So when you're tying your flies. Try to don't um, have too long tail, not too thick abdomen, not too much of a thorax. The wing, that is what you see. The fish sees a little bit of it, but mostly the fish sees the fly from beneath. Uh, yeah, so that is what to think about. So do your research. When you're tying a fly, try it in a glass of water or something and, and you can see it how it looks from from under or hold just hold the fly just to see how the profile is on this emerger or every kind of fly but especially if you're trying to match the hatch we will talk about this a lot during these videos and, and clips and, and this sort of course um, uh, when we are talking about flies and how to tie them better and also fish them so yeah um, now we have talked about the fly in general, about materials, stuff like that. So I will actually tie one of my, um, like, um, this is a, a kind of a merger that works well in, uh, in uh, different colors and different sizes. But I will tie one for you and you can tie it up yourself in those colors uh, that you want to imitate for that. Uh, specific mayfly, uh, but this is a, a emerger mayfly emerger, a general pattern. Uh, so we will tie it, and um, yeah, I will use some of this material I've showed for you, and um, hopefully you will like it and tie it up in different colors and uh, sizes to to match the hatch, so to say. So let's do that. Okay, so let's tie this Mayfly Emerger. Uh, this is a hook from Arex, which I use a lot. This is a Freshwater 531, which is the barbless uh, one, but if you use the Freshwater F30, it's the normal one. And I use a thread from, uh, this is a th really thin thread, 80 knot from uh, Semperfly Nano Silk. They are really nice because they really don't build any body uh, and it's really strong uh, so it's really nice to use to this smaller flies and yeah now for um, the tail I had put some material here now but yeah there it is 
I will use Coctelion. Uh, normally, a Mayfly has uh, two or three, uh, two or three tails, or um, what to call it. Yeah, but now since it's uh, Christmas, no. But uh, I will just take a a bunch of feathers actually uh, to to make this a tail. And you don't want them too long, like a lot of people they tie them in like this, but you just want them to to be uh, sort of one third or maybe half of the fly. So I tie this in. And then I like to use some sparkle emergency yarn, just a few, like not many at all, just a few strands of this to make it just as a little little shock uh, for the fly. I tie it in like this and tie it and then just tie them back to where the tail were and then I just cut it so you will have just a few of these um, sort of shock fibers uh, to the fly. And then for the body we will use this uh, turkey by strips as I've told you before you can use this side but I prefer to use this side. Uh, because you can have a nice shape of the fly for for of this, especially to this. This is a size 12, uh, so these fibers are really nice to uh, to tie them in. And as you can see, these fibers are slightly bent to one or one or another side, and this is how you, if you tie them in in a special way. I tie them in with the bend down because I will show you why. Um, and I start to tie them in there. And then I just build a slightly little taper here. And here's also a tip use some. Um, um, super glue because then it will hold for a lot more fish just a little bit like this so when you are ribbing the fly with this biot it will stay much better and hold up for a lot of fish so as you can see here you will have a little bit of um, this, um, what do you call it? It's like a little fringe to the to the biot, as you can see. So now we have built up the tail, the abdomen of the fly, which is really nice. And now we will use some wing material. And as I talked about before, I like 97 percent of my flies i use cdc and in this case almost all cases of, of size i use two fibers uh, and i put them together with the top together and then the feathers also has a, a slightly bend to them so i tie them down like this with the bend upwards few loose wraps and then i pull this to the back like this and tie it down and now we want to build up that thorax and I love this uh, snowshoe rabbit foot dubbing uh, it is really sexy and this is the color pheasant tail which is, has a brown olive color to it and like I always usually say don't overdo it with this dubbing because 
yeah you don't want to build up the fly too large and here I use a little dubbing brush just to take out some of the fibers so it actually can imitate legs or build up a little profile of the fly and then you just fold this over like this but the trick is to build this bubble so I fold it over and I just give it a little uh, let it go back I push it back and then I take my other fingers and then I check okay that looks perfect and then I use a couple of thread, more thread wraps. That's good with this really thin nano silk thread because uh, it doesn't build up that much. As you can see, the fly is almost ready now. But if we want to make it a little bit sexier, we can uh, add some legs. In this case, I will actually add some legs in a, and uh, it's a partridge feather. And what I do, I use a small feather and I remove some of the fluff and then I just cut it as a V shape if you have seen some of my other videos you have probably seen this but it's like this and it's because I want to just put the uh, these fibers like this and I just do, do a couple of wraps just to see how it lands and that looks okay I can use a dubbing needle just to press the fibers a little bit cut this off and then to build up the rest of the head I just use a little bit more of this nice dubbing And when I feel that is ready, I just whip finish the fly. And you have a really perfect emerger. And this you can tie in a lot of sizes. Uh, I tie this from size uh, 8, 10 down to size 16, 18. So then we are done with the Mayfly emerger. Hope you like this video. And uh, you can either become a community member of, of avoid to see all the videos in a certain cost per month or else you can buy the video as you've probably done right now so thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions just write a comment or send me an email so tight lines out there or tight threads maybe thanks